Hi, welcome to Data Engineering. So today we are going to discuss about PySpark UDF is slow or not. So generally, if you start learning on your own and you search on internet, somewhere you will come to know that people used to say PySpark UDF is slow. What is UDF? User defined function. So we do have some predefined functions, right? Like uh, min, max, uppercase, uh, concat, and we, these are some predefined function. Some function which is not available in Spark and you want to write on your own is what UDF, user defined function. And if you want to know how to write an user defined function, I have given the video and that video is in my playlist. The playlist link is in the description box of this video. You can have a look. Fine. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you whether the UDF and PySpark is slow or not. Okay. If it is slow, why it is slow? So two things we are going to cover in this video. First of all, I have to create a data frame with some data. So I'm creating some data here and then I'm just creating the structure, the schema. And then I'm creating a data frame with the data comma the schema. Now, if I do a print schema, I'll get the schema. Also, the data will be there in the tabular column if I give show. Fine. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to write an UDF in Python, which is PySpark. Okay. So here you can see I'm just doing an import statement, which is required for me to write the UDF. And concat underscore UDF is the UDF name equal to I'm using the lambda function string plus yes. So concat means joining like uh, like uh, joining two strings, right? For example, if I have Gautam Saravanan, if I use concat, it will be Gautam Saravanan, right? So I'm just adding two strings. So here S is my string, whatever I'm going to pass, and I have one more constant string, which is yes. So for the every given string, the S should be get added, concatenated, fine. So now I'm going to use this UDF, df.select concat UDF, so the column name which I'm going to pass is first name. So here you can see in the schema, I have this first name dot allies of name. So the column name is going to be the name you can see in the output here. And I'm using time it function just to record the execution time, like before and after the start and end. And I'm just, I'm just doing the minus operation to get the execution time. Now I'm going to run this. Now you can see in the output, I'm getting my first name with yes as last. It got concatenated, right? So it took 0 0.3 seconds, right? So now I'm coming back uh, because you can ask me like the concat function is already there in Spark, right? So PySpark, right? Then why you are writing it as an UDF? So only with, uh, uh, if I write a UDF with the predefined function only, I can show you the difference between the time taken of predefined function and the UDF. That's the reason I've just, took the uh, existing uh, function which is already available in Python. I made it as UDF and I'm showing you. Now I'm going to use the concat which is already available in the Spark itself, PySpark. So here you can see the same procedure but I'm not writing the UDF. Directly I'm passing my concat in the select statement. First name comma lit of s. So I'm just doing the concat and then I'm giving name as the column name. So I'm going to run this code. So you can see the output. So here it takes 0 0.2 seconds. So the UDF is taking 0 0.3 seconds. So what I'll do, I'll just run it one more time. And again, the second thing also, I'll run it one more time. You will still see some time difference between these two. And if you go for huge volume of data, you will see the very good time difference. Now I've just proved you that UDF is taking time. Okay. You can ask me whether it is only in PySpark or Scala and Java. So in Scala and Java, we don't have any problem because they are JVM based. Only in Python, we are getting this. Now what I'll do, I'll just show you a diagram and I will explain you why here this particular uh, PySpark UDF is slow. See, uh, the Apache Spark engine is implemented in Java and Scala, language that run on the JVM, which is Java Virtual Machine. So the use of Python API requires an interaction between the JVM and the Python runtime. So here, this is possible by the help of PY4J, which actually connects the JVM and Python runtime. So thanks for PY4J. Now, which allows this PY4J, which allows us to call code from the JVM. At the same time, each Spark worker will have a Python runtime running too. For example, you are executing an UDF. When we execute the data frame transformation using native or SQL function, each of those transformation happens inside the JVM itself. Okay, so which is where the implementation of function resides. But if we do the same thing using Python UDF, something very different gonna happen here. First of all, the code cannot be executed in the JVM. That is the first point because it's Python. It will have to be in the Python runtime. To have this possible, each row of the data frame is serialized and sent to Python runtime and returned to JVM. So this is why the time is taking. Okay, so that is what this image explains to you.
So uh, we have some projects like Apache uh, Arrow, which is actually helping us to tune uh, these kind of problems. But we do have some solutions. But with respect to PySpark alone, if try to avoid UDF, try to use the predefined function. So that is the only thing I can tell you. And even you can raise this in an interview, the challenges that you faced in PySpark when you say that your language is PySpark, then you can say these points as the challenges that you have faced. So which will like the interviewer will get some interest on the answers and you can explain him what we can do. What, what alternate we can do. Maybe we can write the UDF alone in some other language. So you, you can say in that way. So thanks for watching. If you really like this video, please do subscribe to my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues. And we created one more channel called Only Digital Guy. I'm giving the link in the description box of this video. And in this channel, we have digital marketing, content creation, and content creation tools kind of videos I'm going to make in that channel. So please do subscribe to that channel as well. Thanks for watching.